Trust it. Hey everybody, Dr. O. Uh, the next few reviews in the sequence that I'm working on here for my anatomy and physiology students are going to be pretty short because this one is the axial skeleton, then I'm going to do the appendicular skeleton, and then joints. But uh, most of that material is going to be like lab-based material or I've covered in other places. So I just want to review the kind of things that might show up on like a lecture or unit exam. So uh, not a lot to talk about here. There's a ton to know. You need to know. I mean, there's there's... 206 bones and all manner of different prominences and features on them, but I'm not going to cover them here. Okay, um, so let's get started. What parts of your skeleton make up the axial skeleton? So your bones are broken up into two groups, the axial skeleton and your appendicular skeleton. Well, appendicular, think appendages, your limbs. Axial, you know, basically uh, it's like a ro you rotate around an axis. So the center, the core of your, your skeletal system is going to be the axial skeleton. So think your skull, so your, your, your head, your vertebral column, so your cervical spine, thoracic spine, lumbar spine, and sacrum, and your ribs uh, into, into, your, uh, your, into the front with your sternum there. So um, that's, that's going to be the axial skeleton. Now your appendicular skeleton is going to be your arms and legs and the bones that attach them to your core. That can be a little confusing. So the, the, just I'll review it here there as well. But uh, the pectoral girdle, which is the clavicle and scapula, they're not actually part of your arm, but they are part of the appendicular skeleton. And your pelvic girdle is going to be your pelvic bones, your ilium, ischium in the back, and pubis in the front. So don't want to confuse you there. But what are some of the functions of the axial skeleton? I mean, protection, clearly first. You're protecting your brain um, with your skull. And um, you're protecting your heart and lungs, et cetera, with your rib cage and your sternum. Um, and then, your, you know, obviously your spine plays a role in holding you erect, holding you upright in movement, but also protects your spinal cord. So, uh, so to me, protection and then, play, you know, that base for movement is clearly important as well. All right. Again, not a lot of questions here because this is all stuff I cover in other places. But how many ribs do we have? How many are true, false, and floating? So uh, the average person, norm, I don't want to say normal, but the average person has 12 pairs of ribs. How many are true ribs? <clears throat> that's going to be, uh, we have seven pairs of true ribs, and that's gonna, so ribs one through seven. The reason they're called true ribs is they have a direct connection. They attach to, um, they attach to the sternum. So as far as false ribs, you have you have five pairs of false ribs, and that's going to be so ribs eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Eight, nine, and ten they're called they're called false ribs because they attach to the cartilage of rib seven, rib pair seven. That's so they don't attach directly to the sternum, and then so that there's five pairs of false ribs: eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then your floating ribs, you have two pairs of those because eleven and ten they don't attach at all. They're little ribs that are only in the back, kind of protecting your kidneys. So twelve pairs of ribs. The first seven pair are true because because they attach directly to the sternum. Um, ribs um, 8, 9, and 10, they attach to the cartilage of 7, not to the sternum, so they're considered false ribs. And then the floating, which so are the floating ribs. Then those last two pairs of ribs are floating ribs because they don't attach in the front at all. Okay, what kind of changes do you see as you travel down the vertebral column? So um, your, even though, as, you're, as you'll learn later, as your spinal cord is getting smaller and smaller and tapering and disappearing about you know, L1, L2 level, your vertebral bones are getting bigger. So if you gave me uh, the skeleton, so you've got, you've got your seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae in your sacrum. If you were to give me all those bones, I could put, there, there are clues that can help you put them together, but I would put them together by size. If, if, if the, the bigger a bone is, the lower it must be. So think about that. The L3 vertebrae is bigger than the L2 vertebrae because the L2 vertebrae has to support all your weight from L2 and above. Well, your L3 vertebrae has to support all that weight plus the L3 level. So that's why as you go down, they get bigger and bigger. So you can get, you can learn a lot about, you know, just where a bone would fit in the vertebral column by looking at that. So that there are other other changes. Yes, of course. You know, your cervical vertebrae have features the other ones don't. Your uh, they uh, they have bifid spinous processes and they have what's called the transverse foramen. They have an extra hole. Most of them do. Your thoracic vertebrae would have the reason they're called that is because they're attachment to the ribs. So they would have they would have rib attachment points you wouldn't see in other places. But uh, no big deal. The, what I'm what I'm asking with this point is the fact that they're getting bigger and because they're supporting more weight which is one of the major functions of your vertebral column, besides, besides protection. All right, how many vertebrae do we have and how many each area? I think we just kind of went through that, but there are seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, so we're at seven plus 12, 19 plus five is 24. Then you have your sacrum. Now, the sacrum used to be individual sacral segments that fuse together. Uh, probably the most significant thing there is you're technically not supposed to be diagnosing a child as having problems with, with bedwetting until their sacrum is fused because it's completely normal until that fusion takes place. But uh, So you've got uh, seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, and the sacrum.
All right, so that's the little bit I want you to know on top of what we're learning about the axial skeleton in other places. So get your learn on.